This is the uh, wiring loom guard that bolts to the front of the door in the jam where the wires go from the body of the car into the door into the door. So this is in the jam bolted to the door somewhat like that. Actually probably like this. And um if this were the right door. Anyway, uh this is foam I used, you know, from a from a box carburetor or something. And I just trimmed it, glued it in there. The original ones are missing. Here's a here's one original one. This is an original one. It's a foam. It's hard like a rock now. It's kind of a thick black foam. Anyway, this stuff is perfect. It's soft and pliable. I glued it in. I glass beaded these and painted them. Here, this is... Uh, <clears throat> originally, they had some kind of rubber on here, like shrink tubing or something. Anyway, I have large shrink tubing, but it was I tried it. It was too difficult to put it on here because of all these bends and notches. So I just used gaffer's tape. Gaffer's tape, see? Studios use that. I use that. Just put it on there. It's going to work perfectly. And then this is what it looks like assembled. And then these tabs bend in to lock the top plate on. And then this bolts to the door with little hex screws. Pretty easy to do. Okay, I'm going to put uh, these uh, seals in. Here, you know, they're supposed to block out bugs and stuff. Uh, when they did the body work, they filled these with Bondo and I had to dig them out and drill the holes. Um, that's typical, you know, they don't take the time to do that detailed work usually, um, but it's okay, it turned out okay. And uh, so these go in like that, the, the stud of the rubber goes in the hole and you gotta push that in. So we're gonna lube these with uh, assembly lube, better known as ass lube. Take a punch, push it in like that. So that lets it drain, covers it so bugs don't get in. Tarantulas and stuff. And then this one, now I made a mistake. I left the original on there and then they painted it. See, and this is the, this is the replacement, which is this from Carpenter. These little, they're the same size, but I left it on there, my fault. Now I can touch, I can touch it up later. It's not the end of the world. And then uh, got a couple more bumpers to put on. We're gonna put that on here. This is the back of the door. It's a mass lube.
that's a toughie, man. That one doesn't want to go in. Oh, got that side in. Oh, yeah, I can get it from the back. There we go. That's it. In. Okay. There it is, see? Sticking out through. That's where, that's good. All right. Okay. So I'm doing the lock knob now. You know. Lock knob goes here. Pull up and down. Goes on the other side, you know, but still like that. So I'm working on the lock knobs. And I have these two. Now, I've already straightened this a little bit and look at this kludge. This thing is uh, bent to poo poo, and I've already straightened straightened it excessively. It was it was bent into a C. Uh, it looks like it's got this bend okay, but it's bent here. Somebody straightened it there, and it's bent here. If this one is supposed to be this one. And this one came off of the right door, if I'm not mistaken, but I don't remember. Anyway, uh, I guess I'll just go ahead and use these two and forget about that one because they're exactly bent. They're just opposites, but they're bent exactly the same. So that has to be correct. Uh, these, it's typical that these are bent really bad, typical. And when you put the door panel on, they should not be binding on the door panel. That's a common problem. You put the lock knob on, and then you can hardly pull it up and down because they bind. That's because this is bent. So these should go through the door panel easily. The lock knob should be able to be screwed on easily. So I'm going to try putting this on and see how it goes. Okay, so here's the rod. I put the rod in. It's not latched yet. I don't have it hooked yet, but uh, it's straight up and down. It's loose in the hole. It looks right. And you know, see how it, see how it, uh, it goes in and then comes backwards and then up. That's how it's bent. See, it starts here and then comes backwards and then up straight through the hole. So that's the way it's supposed to be. Yeah. Okay, good. I should have done this before I uh, started restoring, sure we'll put the carpeting in and the insulation but I'm working on the seatbelt bolt holes in the floor. They're a 7 16 20 fine thread. You know, here's the seatbelt bolt. I got new ones. And of course they don't go. They don't even, it doesn't even, it goes about a quarter of a turn and that's it. So I should have dealt with that earlier and I didn't. And uh, so I was just gonna, you know, you guys who uh, are learning how to clean threads and tap threads and stuff, you got to make sure before you start doing anything, make sure the threads are clean and these are not. So I'm taking this wire brush and I'm cleaning them. I think they might be a little bit rusty and that may, might be part of the problem. 
make sure you don't get any of this insulation in the threads while you're trying to screw the bolt in. Let's see if that helped at all. You can use anti-seize a little bit. I'm probably getting, eh, didn't help much. <laughs> Let's try it some more. This is a metal brush, bottle brush, you know. Clean the threads. You know, what's really important is uh, when you start the tap, you got to make sure that you start it straight. I can't even hardly. This thing, I can't get it started. So I have to kind of go by sight. See the bolt. I can see the angle of the bolt. It's pretty much level. It looks like it's tilted up a little bit, but I don't, it's hard to tell, but it's pretty much level. So if I can get the tap to start like that, maybe right there, jeez, I don't know, something like that. wiggling all over the place yeah I think that's it sometimes you can use anti-seize but I wouldn't do that right now I'm not gonna do that right now boy it keeps angling I think I got it started Boy, these threads are messed up. I should have done this a long time ago and I forgot. Yeah, I got it started. You know, if you cross them, I mean, you can tap new threads, but that's just, you know, you want to try to get the original threads. Yeah, that's better. 7 16 20 is the thread size for these fine thread. Yeah, that's going much better now. Yeah, okay. See, I can even do it by hand almost, yeah. Yeah, cleaned them up good. Then, see how rusty it is in there. That's what was wrong with it. Take this. Clean them up. Sorry. Oh yeah, look at that. Yeah, all the way, nice and clean. That's no big deal, most of you guys know this crap anyway. Seatbelt, retaining bolt. You know, always think about what you're doing and stuff, you know, think it through before you you know, some of the mistakes I've made in the past is you jump into it without thinking it through, then you make a mistake. It's a little bit, it's a tiny bit at an angle. What can you do? Yeah, it's just a, it's just like one degree. Here's the, the original bolt should only go up to here. See, a uh, washer, I'm sorry, the original washer should only go up to there so then the seat belt can swivel 
on the shoulder, see? There we go. Okay, cool. See you later, man. Thanks for watching. So listen, I'm gonna show you a trick that I learned kind of accidentally. When I, the last two restorations I did, they both use these, I call them P-clamps. They're plastic, shaped like a, like a P. Ah! <laughs> All right, anyway, P-clamps. Okay. And these are in the engine compartment and they hold the wiring down. These are factory original. They're all over the engine compartment and there's a lot of them inside the car as well, under the dash. There's big ones under the dash. These ones you see inside the engine compartment mostly. These things get very brittle. They get de deformed like that, right? So what I do is I take a heat gun Okay, heat gun, okay. So, let's do this first. These things I bought online, they're junk, okay? They break real easy. Now, of course, they're not doing it now, but they break real easy. But I noticed that if I heated them up, they become a lot more pliable after they dry, not while they're hot, but after they dry. And these things are very brittle. I think this one might be more. So I'm gonna try to break this. Let's see where it goes. That opens pretty wide. Usually they break by this time. See, like that, okay? That didn't take too much to break, right? So then let's try, let's heat these up. Pretty hot. For some reason, I don't know why, I don't know that much about thermodynamics and stuff like that, but when you heat these up, they become, and then they cool off, they're a lot more pliable. And so that's what you could do with yours. Take them off carefully, clean them. I didn't clean these. I'm just trying to show you. Clean them thoroughly, 409 water, steel wool, SOS pads, right? Clean them real nice and then heat them. I also noticed that if you clean them real good and then heat them and kind of just slightly melt the surface, and I mean slightly, uh, it, it gives it a shiny surface again. I did that on a few before. You have to really just, okay, so this is still hot, <laughs> but it's way more pliable now. It's warm, okay? Those are still hot. These are completely different and these are cool already and they're just completely different as opposed to let me get another, let me get another new one. Yeah, it's different, you can't see it, but, but you go like this, right? And it just goes straight again. With these, you can see it stays, it'll, it'll be round still. It won't just fling back to straight. So you can tell that these are much harder when they're not been heated. 
what, what I was doing is I'm working on something and I was wrapping them with tie wraps and as I was tightening them, tightening them down, they were breaking and I wasn't putting hardly any pressure on them. So I did this and then tightened them down and they didn't break and they hold and so these are good to go. Okay. Much more pliable. Before this one was really hard to open. This is completely cooled off. Mostly. Let me see. Let me try to break it. Let me see what happens. Look at how far I'm opening it. That's not going to break. Okay. Okay, that worked really good. So there's a trick for you. To save these, these are, you can't buy them. Do what you have to do to protect these. You know? Okay, good luck. Check this out. It's just standing up on its edge. Look at that. See? Just a razor blade. See, it's not touching anything. Crazy.